Thank you. <laughs> it's been a crazy day. Oh my gosh, has it ever. So hello and welcome to day number four in the Enya Dream Accelerator Table Makers Club interview series. I am so excited about our next guest and uh, we just connected on her amazingly beautiful red sweater, sweatshirt, something gorgeous. It looks great, especially with the red lipstick. And it's funny, we were talking about red lipstick last night or on the call, on our most recent call, we were talking about that. I'm actually gonna pull up the video so I can watch any comments because for some reason I'm not able to see yeah. people's names. So many aspects oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, I feel bad. I just jumped into Rosalia's uh, marketing call. Um, all right, I'm not, is it, is this? Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. All right, welcome everybody. Hola, hola, hello, Normita. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so now I can see your comments on my phone as I talk to Luce uh, live here uh, on this interview series. So first of all, thank you, Luce, for joining. Uh, you put your name as Luchi, which is our nickname for you, and it's also a nickname that your family has for you. It has a has a double meaning, and maybe we can get to that uh, in this call. So before we get started, I wanted to make sure that I explain what in the world we're doing here, what is happening, why, because this group um, is a lot of things for a lot of people, and what we decided to do here was, um, oh, loose, oh, light bulb. <laughs> Somebody just posted a light bulb, the light bulb emoji, which I'm sure have you, does, does that happen often with you or no, that people will, will do that? I think it's, okay. no, but it, it's funny. <laughs> it is funny. It's adorable. All right. So the reason why we decided to start this uh, table maker series is because, you know, there's so much talk out there about getting a seat at the table, about having a seat at the table, about um, making, sh you know, about just talking about what it feels like to um, not have access to something and not feel like spaces and places are designed for us and our and like who we are and our culture and our backgrounds. And it is true that uh, there are certain institutions and certain um, spaces that real systems that seem like they were built um, to kind of keep us out. Or another way of putting it, they were only built to keep a certain group of people in. And, uh, and as we ascend, as people of color uh, ascend and aspire and dream and want to take on leadership positions, we kind of bump into um, walls and situations where we feel like we are not, we don't belong in those spaces. And so for me, I decided to take matters into my own hands years ago and create a film with no experience, with no nothing, and then create a media company with no um, roadmap. And oftentimes have felt very much like um, it's a better idea to build my own thing than to try to fit this into anything that exists. And so two years ago, we decided to uh, take things to an, another level when I realized that there were amazing, amazing, creative Latinas, Latinas that were building stuff, Latinas that were breaking rules, um, a lot like the guest that I have today, Luz Mac, and they needed my support. And how did I know they needed my support? It's because they were reaching out to me. So people see the film all the time. They, um, hello, Adriana, welcome to the call. I, Adriana, I think you need to join us in the EDA, by the way. You're just always in our in our world here. And I think it'd be more fun for you. It's fun now. It would be really fun for you to join us in EDA. That's a sidebar. Um, <laughs> so what was I saying, Luz? You know that I do when I lose track of what no, I was No, no, but you're right. You created a community where we were welcome and we get to talk about what we want and our spaces and how we want to kind of like highlight our culture, our, our way of thinking, our, our just our life, like for the voice that hasn't been highlighted, for the right. woman that's not there on the magazine, for the, you know, I want to call it the tastemakers, the other tastemakers that you don't know about, you know? Yes. 
Yes. And like, where's our place, right? And so I certainly, I joined coaching groups. I had mentors. I did masterminds. And I was pretty much the only, the other. But I had been used to that, right? But then when I was talking to women, I would say informally, EDA is a formal kind of structure, but informally, I'd be talking about our mothers, our tias, uh, you know, all of the things that, that have to do with being Latina and having and being a rule breaker, having your own business, being a creative, you know, doing the things that you are up to in your life. And I decided I have to create a space for this because there isn't anything like this right now for us. And women are hungry and are deserving of someone that knows how they feel personally right yeah. and so that's why i decided to start eda you joined us in eda not too long ago and it's really remarkable the amount of um <laughs> like the the amount of stuff that a single person can get done uh if if you guys could see a list you just wouldn't believe it the the amount of things meetings press uh, that this single person, human being here in her red sweater has experienced in the last whatever, less than a year is unbelievable. And um, and I know there is a big win that we can't quite talk about yet. We'll just say it's a big win. And, uh, but we'll talk about it soon because at, at some point we need to um, tell everybody so everybody yeah. can buy it. <laughs> yeah. But rest assured, uh, there is gold at the end of every rainbow, and um, and I'm here to feature Lou Smack, who is a prolific author. She came to EDA having already written five children's books, not one, folks, five, and uh, and I have those books. I actually just put a whole stack of books away, um, and I'm like, damn it, I should have had them right here in my office, but they're no in uh, my bookshelf downstairs, which is uh, the bookshelf where my it's my friends who have written books and I'm like damn I'm I feel kind of cool that I have so many friends that have taken that leap because it is not easy to, it's one thing to say you're going to write a book it's a whole nother thing to write the book and then get the book published and in your case pre, ha, work and collaborate with uh, not only animators and other artists I mean there's so many layers to what yeah. you have accomplished and um, I'm just absolutely blown away. And so before I give you a chance to share your story, um, I I remember you and I first talked, I think, on Messenger. And you reached out to me. And a lot of people reached out to me on different channels. And it's very difficult for me to uh, keep up with um, with all the incoming stuff, right? So I don't know. I feel like you said, here's what hooked me. I think you said something about your daughter. And I was like, oh, like, I got to read this. <laughs> you felt like, what's that? What's yeah. that? I think I said, you get me, you get my daughter, and you get my mother. Um, like, it's, it was like, I found you through the film. I saw the film, and I was like, and I know I told your husband, I was in love. Like, whatever this woman was doing, I needed to be part of the train. If she's running the one train, we're jumping on the one train. If she, we're hitting the express, we're hitting the express. It was like that kind of New York mode. But wherever Denise is going, I wanted to follow. <laughs> and I was just so happy when you responded. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know why. It was just like, yes, she knows this is important to me. And then when I told you about my goals, like you talked about this in the film and these are my goals and you you cared instantaneously you were like let's talk about that and please join me on this call and i had no idea what the call was about and it was about eda and truth be told eda call happened and i still didn't know what was happening i was just like i was like you know the, the, i love using the ice age uh kind of like symbolism you know the squirrel who's trying to get the nut like i was like the squirrel was like oh my god oh my god she's here and then, <laughs> and then, like, everything you talked about it was just like boom 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 like she understands but understands on a deeper level than a lot of people care to dive into you know and and i think it was that genuosity like the call <laughs> the word i like to use and also like making sure it ties into you in a personal level, that was was very calling to me. 
Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. There's a little bit of feedback. Are, is there like another device there that is on? No, I, I, I think I'm in an echoey space. I was feeling it too, but I, it's yeah. not on my phone because okay. my kids are all using their laptops. Okay. So I'm like computerless. All right. Actually, this works. This is good because I just, um, I was just able to, there was another device that was on and I just took it off. So, okay. Um, okay. So, all right. And I'm looking at, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, people. Normita says, I like Latinas that break things. And that's why I like you, Denise. Oh, thank you. Hopefully I haven't broken too many things, but I get it, it's more for. But yeah, we're breaking up, we're breaking up like this traditional model that um that doesn't like allow for our cultural considerations because we come into these conversations, we come into these coaching moments and these coaching um interactions with more than just uh, what it seems. You know, yeah. we come in having to consider how our family's going to feel, having to consider a lifetime of always wondering what they'll think and what they'll say. And we just can't leave that behind. It's got to go with us. Uh, we just have to figure out a way to make it a win-win. And I feel like that's what we do in EDA. So um, I'm going to move my phone because I'm still hearing that weird feedback and I don't know where it could be coming from. No, I, I completely agree with you. Um... I think one of the things for me that EDA took such a personal thing is like, yeah, I've written books before, but I didn't, and I knew the why I was writing. I wanted to do something for my children so they could see themselves in the content. But like, and I, and I was sharing this with someone when I joined EDA, I really dig deep into why I was really writing. Like, what was it that's really driving me? And, and you know, I'm going to try not to get emotional. I get emotional when I talk about myself. But I think I learned to, not I think, I know. I learned to love myself more. And I said this in one of my confessionals with, with the help of EDA. Because we talk about the what is the roadblocks. And a lot of people don't understand. Before we say we want to have a goal, we have ginormous roadblocks, especially as women, as Latina, because we are growing up in traditions where we don't have an opportunity to speak. And I know a lot of our other guests have talked about that or what it is to be visible. Some of us, and I'm going to say some of us, their goal in life was to get married, have a good husband or partner and have a home. And to, to them, that was a level of success. So, so we're not talking about that traditional success. We're talking about the you know, what was it that made you think as a child, I want to do this one day? Is it like, I want to be an astronaut? I want to be a writer. I want to be a performer. But why don't we have people kind of like nurturing those dreams, right? So EDA is the nurturing. They Just think about it. Like uh, Denise is the gardener. She's making sure everyone has the right amount of flowers and <laughs> around you to, to kind of help you blossom but most importantly waters you with love every now and then when you need it and sometimes we'll be the one throwing the rocks and saying hey you need a little bit of dirt <laughs> we can't all grow like that but <laughs> the truth of the matter is that we all blossom through these kind of like trials and errors but we have to try it eda is the perfect roadmap to get to know yourself the reason why you want to do these things and then perfect the skill because that's another thing i wrote a I wrote a book not knowing how to do it and then tried it again and tried it again. And it was only till recently that I really considered considered myself a writer. And that's that's hard to hear. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about, I started in 2016 and I never considered myself a writer till 2020 in a pandemic <laughs> with a group of women that I don't know personally, but I've grown to love and call my EDA oh. sisters. Sorry. Oh, that is so, I mean, let's just pause right there. She wrote five books and had a hard time calling herself a writer slash author, okay? And I think um, this is a really important moment because I know that you're not alone in believing that. Yeah. I know that you're not alone in feeling like, yeah, well, you know, it's like when people say, oh, my God, you're so good at this. And because it either comes easy to you or because – you think you could be a gazillion times better? I don't know. Or because you just simply don't see yourself with that title, but yet you're acting like it? I'm not quite sure. But there's power in owning it. There's power in that. And so tell us tell us what, what your books are about, who yes. you're writing for, and what inspired you to write to begin with. So 
what first inspired me to write was my daughters. I just really wanted to tell them my story as a child in Dominican Republic. And with EDA, I came to this opportunity to really like, like I said before, dig deep, but most importantly, be genuine about that voice. Like feed the vulnerable voice, your inner inner child, some people want to call her, or just like I, I say Lucci, and the reason I, I, I'm welcoming people to call me that is because it took me a long time to be comfortable to share who I really am. A lot of people know me in, in, in different settings, but, you know, to be a creative, it, it takes a lot to be vulnerable and be happy about being vulnerable. So after experiencing EDA, having these amazing conversations about like, let's dig deeper. Like, what is it? Like, let's think about it. My, you know, what is your gut telling you? Like all these questions, when you were writing that, what was the process or let's talk, like talk about it. The meetings, oh, that's another thing. When you're a writer, you walk into some meetings and you submit your manuscript and you could get torn down. Let's talk about feeling that. But uh, back to your question, I am writing and I came very, um, this was like kind of my aha moment in EDA. I am writing for a voice that I've never read in a book. Mm. And, and when I, I know that, and I'm going to, I'm going to thread lightly on this because I'm trying not to use race because it's not just about race. It's about us collectively doing and giving other opportunities for other writers to emerge, right? We know there's a formula that uh, publishing houses accept writers. I'm not sure what that formula is, but it seems like the formula is we want to hear this one voice. And mm -hmm. there's a myriad of voices, guys, mm -hmm. that wants to share with you other lives, other opportunities. So if I want to talk about the other, the other experience, that's why, because I don't see it. It's not reflected enough. We have many writers that are emerging and they're amazing writers and we haven't given them the, the opportunity, the backing to share that story with you, mm -hmm. to let you feel what it is. The, their chitter chatter of the wind, what, what is it to them? Their emotions, when they taste something, what their taste buds say. And I'm trying to give all these kind of like uh, imagery, but we need to hear that because the truth of the matter, the more we silence, our creatives, the more we are also saying okay to our children, oh, it's okay, we could hear you later. And that's what we're replicating over and over in our communities. And I am really happy and proud that EDA is saying this is a safe space to share your work and let's highlight each other. As EDA colleagues, we highlight each other all the time with each other's works. We either do intros to each, for each other or we uh be on each other's podcasts <laughs> i know <laughs> each other out. so like having that community to me meant so much because it's it's hard i've been in mentorship programs i've been in other communities and um you know there's just something very special about eda that i have not seen or experienced mm -hmm. anywhere else Thank you. Thank you. And I want to, I want to uh, go back a little bit and I so appreciate that and hear, hear what you're saying is it feels awesome. Um, oh, thank you. So talking of, you know, you share a lot in the group about your experience because you are out there. I mean, you didn't, just, <laughs> there's some people that they create, but then they never try to get that creation to be seen or read in your case. And you and I know all I've seen of you because we met like just a few weeks, I think, before you started EDA. So I don't know loose pre EDA loose, but loose yeah. EDA is it's like there isn't um, an opportunity that you're not trying to see. There isn't a meeting you're not trying to get. There isn't an interview or an opportunity. Like you're just always seizing the moment and um, it's just showing us how it's done. You're everywhere. Like Gary V says, you're everywhere and you're posting it and it just adds to um, your like cachet. You know what I mean? Like, damn, she is. And you have a full time job and you're and it's not this. This is your side hustle. Right. That's yeah. to be your full time hustle. And the thing is, you know, one time you came into the group and you were, you shared something about feedback that you got from people that are not Latino that said that didn't quite understand uh they didn't say this because they, they didn't realize it but they didn't get 
what you were trying to say. They didn't understand the depth and the nuance of the stories you tell and their children's books, you guys, these are short, short books, but they say so much and loose captures this nuance, but if you, it's like an inside joke, it will go straight over your head. You won't even know what happened. <laughs> like, like you just won't get it. And you won't even know that there was something to get. And I remember um, you sharing about that and just saying, you know, and it just goes to show like, we need people representing us in these high places. We need people that are accomplished. We need people to be recognized and ascending to the highest point because um, otherwise these little these moments, these those those nuanced moments that appear in your book, they're like um, they're like these beautiful little moments. And if you're part of our culture, regardless of what country your family is from, if you're part of the Latinx culture, you will get it and you yeah. will feel validated. And if missing, you'll realize, wow, this is this subtlety is missing in some of the traditional books that I read or that I read to my kids. Um, but it's very much alive and well in your stories. And um, and I remember all of us like having this conversation in one of the uh, calls and everyone just chiming in like, no, don't give up on this because you do receive feedback. You are a unicorn. <laughs> you are not, you're, you're roaming in a land where a lot of people don't look like you and <laughs> they can be critical of your magic. And so tell me, how have you gotten through that? Oh my God. I think before EDA, I would break down a lot harder when people didn't like that or would say um, or would say something that that was, I don't want to say unwelcoming because as a writer, you need the feedback so you could perfect. But some of it was harsh. It was like, like, it wasn't like an objective feedback. Like, I didn't understand this. Like, why are we highlighting? Like, all these questions are great questions to ask writers. <laughs> the, the ones that are like kind of harsh are like, why are you even bothering? Or why are you <laughs> writing? Or, yeah. you know, I've, I've heard that. But these are the same people that it took me a while to be like, then why are you following me? Like, <laughs> I just finished all 2020. <laughs> right. It's like if you're, it's just, it's so, it's so, people can be so ironic. <laughs> but, but um, the beauty of it is that regardless of that, I have a strong belief now because of EDA, you need to learn to listen to the negative feedback because it's going to help you get more critical in your work and more critical in your response of how you want people to really get you. Like all this when you're a writer um, happens and a lot of people like don't really, don't really commend it or don't really talk about it. They talk about it for for a little bit, but like, it's important because it's part of who you are. Mm -hmm. You can't write your next piece without knowing what went wrong in your last piece or what you loved or hate. There's pieces that I wrote that I'm like, oh, I really love this. I could have done better at this. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. It's just perfecting the formula. But I do feel like EDA has helped me honed in a skill that I, I wasn't very like, open or boisterous about saying like oh my god I have this amazing skill like I didn't I you know it, because again we're growing up in a in a culture where you know being submissive and be a little quiet or you know calladita te ves más bonita or or the guy see 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 awesome you know like the, right. like, like the shushing the beautiful shushing yes. world that we grew oh, up in yes. it yes. takes a minute for us to develop our voice Wow, you just touched on something really big. It's true, it's that beautiful shushing. That's a good thing to talk about because well, it, I'm a writer, so I'm <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> about it. That's a really good, uh, beautiful shushing. It, it does, it feels like, um, like you're not really being heard. Yeah, and, it almost feels like abuela trying to put you to sleep and go shh, 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 shh. Mm -hmm. or when they're when they know you're gonna say something a little like sassy. <laughs> like whichever the shushing face that makes you be like ah oh, I've been shushed before when I had a bright idea or a thought mm -hmm. it happens and we need to we need to acknowledge that and why is it happening and how are we we're going to respond to that 
Oh my God. I'm, I'm like writing that down. I don't want to forget that beautiful show. <laughs> and like how that can really contribute to a feeling of not feeling confident. Like, uh, you know, cause there's, you know, you start some very interesting conversations in EDA and crack your authenticity really cracked a lot of things open. And, um, and I know lately it's been about feedback and I too have had a hard time with feedback yeah. and it probably stems from being a little criticized, maybe a little bit more than a single person could, you know, or should be criticized uh, as a kid and finding those trust, finding a relationship with criticism slash feedback, because oftentimes feedback can be collapsed into this is just criticism that starts with an F, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. it's hard to make that distinction, but yeah, we talked about it and it's like, you know, if we, if we kind of externalize and just say, okay, criticism is just, it's just feet or criticism slash feedback, whatever you want to call it. It's just, it's just an opinion. And what about if, if, you know, if there was some gold, but you just had to like look for it. And what about if it didn't mean anything personal, the way that we took it when we were kids. And I'm also a hundred percent guilty of it. And I think I talked about this on my last podcast, even how I really only take, um, you know, I'm only available for feedback um, from certain people, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, because I have a that trusted relationship and then everyone else I'll take, the, I'll hear it uh, and, and I'll look for the gold. But if I don't find it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do what this habitual thing that I did when I was a kid, which is feel like there's something wrong with me. Yeah. And the thing that's the reason why we're talking about this is because people think that it is strategy. It is how to, it is, I don't know how to, uh, whatever. And that's why I'm not successful. No, that's not why you're not successful. Why you're not successful is because what we're talking about right now, why that thing hasn't been taken off the ground or why, like, um, you know, Luz has five books, five. It's not like she has this big idea and she's starting in EDA. This woman, and the thing is too, I think you said what, in one of our calls, you said, I, I want to write 30 books. Like, like you have this, to me, crazy ass goal, which I love. I'm just like, okay, let's do this. Right. Like, yeah. She has so many stories that are just wanting to pour out of her heart. Okay. And so what, what is stopping those, those stories from just exploding is yeah. these limiting beliefs that we have. And yeah, it could sound like, because I can't handle another person criticizing me, but it's not the other person. It's because I can't handle me believing I'm not good enough yeah. yet again. Right. And, and I feel like on some magic happened with you on that call and you were able to get like, okay, that's just feedback. I'll just, yeah. I'll just look for the gold. And if there's no gold, just cross it and on to the next person. But someone out there, someone out there is going, at least one person is going to think this is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> we know this because but, people love it takes time and it takes time because you need to hear all that. And I think I, I didn't share this in one of our calls. I got um I I have posted good things on my on my public page, like good things that happen and also bad. But people don't understand sometimes the depth of the bad things because mm -hmm. there's other things happening in the other round. Like for example, uh, Maria the Super Helper won in October a prize. Right? Well, yeah, what is the big thing? And yeah. it was my, because I you know, I'm new to the animation world and yeah. hello, a mother that doesn't know anything, but according to my designer, like, man, you know something because you be on my butt if this doesn't turn or that doesn't jump or whatever. But anyways, the point is, uh, this animation made it to Kid Film Festival and it's, it's kind of important because a lot of the kids that um, criticize this film, they're actually in the industry and with a, with um, an adult panel as well mm -hmm. and they gave it a four out of five stars mm -hmm. but this is the funny part the criticism was huge like it was like oh we felt like we didn't it has a sweet and endearing uh moment and it it captures something so magical from other voices not represented and they actually said how cu culturally affirming it is yes but it's low and I feel like I wanted this and I feel like I wanted that. 
And I was like, you know, it was almost like saying, I wanted the two appetizers, two entrees, <laughs> and the bellini on the side. And why did it end? Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'll give it a four. <laughs> so funny. It's like, um, and so Rosalia just joined. Hello, Rosalia. Thanks for Hi, joining us. I love how our ADA sisters always show up for each other. Um, yeah, it it is funny how like um you know, it's like, you just got to wonder like what, like really you're sticking around just to tell me all that stuff. And like the, uh, but there's, it's cause there's something working <laughs> and then everyone's got an opinion and yeah, uh, loose, um, started submitting her animations. Cause not only has she written five books, not only does she have an apparel line and not only does she have dolls that go with some of her books. But she also creates these animations for stories that are so sweet and so fun to watch. And you submitted them to festivals. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there was this cascade of awards that they started. Yeah. And I was like, what? It, what? How? Like, unbelievable. Just there's opportunity everywhere. And if, if Luz sees an opportunity, she's like, it doesn't matter what's in the way, she's moving towards it. And, yeah. and then in this case, you won, not just one time, multiple yeah, I, times. I, I, yeah, I won uh, at least uh, two times for one of the animations. The other one didn't win an award, but it was recognized so highly by the a film festival winner that he won like over five film festivals that I really respect. The guy scheduled a call with me to say, I'm showing this to my niece. And, you know, we're not from the same culture, but I think I really love the fact that he gave me his feedback and I respected the feedback. Even, even let's say it's someone that's not like a film festival winner because I need this feedback. Like I want to know what worked, what didn't work and you know, what you loved. But that was like, to me, that was the highest honor. Um, I think his name is Fahi. Uh, but I was just like really in awe by his work. But um the, th the funny thing was that I was invited to over a hundred film festivals to submit my work. Oh my and God. I just selected less than 10 because they are expensive. And, yeah. but I was, I was really honored that when my stuff went up, it, it was like, it took off like everyone that I never even knew had a film festival invited. And I was just like, whoa. Um, when I showed it to, um, Victor, who's my animator, and uh, Carter, who is the cre uh, creative uh, music director. Carter is amazing as well. He writes, uh, he has written like amazing music, even for the Chai and other beautiful works that are out there. And and Vanessa Vanessa does the illustrations that does amazing work as well. But just having a team meeting with them saying like, this is the feedback we got. This is the response we had people were like really happy like and I told them like congratulations you did an amazing job because this wasn't just about me mm -hmm. I wanted a team that believe in this concept and this idea and that happened to re understand that we are underrepresented communities we are undiscovered voices and I'm going to use the word undiscovered mm -hmm. because mm. um I don't like hearing that Latinos are mainstream media. It's not just about mainstream media. Yeah, we, we're a whole richness of avocado out there that you haven't been tasting. With <laughs> <laughs> tostones, since I'm Dominican, <laughs> you gotta try it. The avocado with the tostones. <laughs> oh, I, I sign me up. Those are two of my most favorite things to eat. Yes. <laughs> But again, we're just we're just so much more than that. I'm happy that culturally we have a lot of beautiful representation of people that are working so hard on this. And and you should you should put yourself out there, Denise, because you really are doing something for Latinas. You you are like the madrina, you know. Oh, and I know I started calling you the God, God <laughs> the madrina. Uh -huh. You really really you really push people in a way that is is hilarious you know you'll be like oh so you won 30 books how about the animations are they coming with them <laughs> it could be a series right and how much are, are we selling these for <laughs> like, like, and i'll be like oh i want like i'll say a low number and you're like mm, no three times <laughs> three times and although <laughs> i have not 
I've reached my goal. It is just flattering to have the ultimate cheerleader and the ultimate team behind me mm -hmm. saying like, okay, you're learning. We're, you were still growing. You're going in the right direction. There, there are these opportunities you probably didn't know about. I do try for a lot of things, but uh, lately I've been trying to kind of like praying a lot, meditating, because mm -hmm. I want to try out for the things that really speak to my soul. Yeah. And I'm trying to dig that. And I know that's something we are working personally. Mm -hmm. and, and for those who are still trying to understand everything about EDA, it is really centering you on your goals and your career path mm -hmm. and your professional passions that you never thought you had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it takes, it takes all of it, right? That it doesn't like when you're creating something like it's like when you have a child, it doesn't matter how many books you read. It really doesn't like you, it just, you got to just give it a go. And I remember yeah. um, having my first daughter, you don't know this story. No one knows the story. My first daughter, um, my husband and I are in the hospital and it was a challenging birth. And uh, I, oh boy, I know that. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I um, stayed up for 48 hours straight. And, um, uh, and here's, these are my thoughts. Like, um, I'm, this is, this was a terrible idea. Like, <laughs> I, I said that to my son. No way. I was so nervous. I'm like, I'm going to be a terrible mother. Like this was the worst. Um, like how could this have happened? You know? And, uh, and the night that I actually fell asleep, it was night number three in the hospital and my husband's sleeping in a cot next to me. And yeah. he's like in the little thingy next to me. And I woke him up. I'm like, babe, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the worst mother ever. Like you, I, 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 and I was crying. I was convinced this is not, this is, and I read the books. And I talked to the people and, uh, and then I just realized I'm a mom for 48 hours and I'm pretty sure I'm going to suck at this. And, uh, and we talked and then I, and then I, and we're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. We're going to do this together and look at all these other people that have had babies that we know and we're fine. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's true. Okay. And then I fell asleep. I got a night, good night's rest. And so the thing is, is like, it's like parenting. It's like these things that we do, these books that you write and these projects and these businesses that people start, um, they're like another baby. And like, some yeah. you got to try this with them and try that. And they're all different. And when you were talking, I was just thinking like, you know, the roots have to grow. Yeah. The roots have to grow. And I love the metaphor of having you be the person that makes sure the sun is on you and make sure that, that you're properly watered and that you're blooming next to beautiful things. Because I really do feel like that's my job is nurturing and encouraging and pointing out your worth when you forget, because to me, it's so obvious. And I know being the person myself and having two coaches myself, that I need that same level of nurturing. And that what we do here is we build that first tree or the, we allow that first tree to grow and bear fruit. Right. And ain't nobody selling this fruit at market value. No. We're not selling it like everybody else. This is valuable, right? And um, and then also, and then what's possible? Some people have been in EDA for two years now, and we're building orchards. This isn't just a tree. This is like, okay, how big can I take this? How much can I scale this? And so sometimes, it, you know, there's phases to these things, and it's messy a lot of the time. Um, and my philosophy is just stay in it, but stay in it around people that believe in you, even when you don't believe in yourself. And uh, I feel like you are such a beautiful example of that, Luce. And oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, I mean, just like, uh, it doesn't matter what happens, you just get right back up again. And you know, there's a lot of a lot of people that say that that's the only thing that matters is an ability just to, okay, this is another day. I'm going to wipe that off, take that off, and just start again. And I just want everyone here to know, Luce has a full-time job. She has three children. Her, she always says it's her husband's business, but it's also your business too, right? You yeah. own a pizza shop. We opened a pizza shop, and we're trying to, like, uh, get an opportunity again to give free food to the community and that's oh. been kind of like the hardest tra challenge so i'm always helping him as well so we we, we are very latino we know hard work <laughs> yeah yes. and, and so i mean 
if you think that you can't do EDA because you have a full time job, because you um, have because, you know, any anything. Right. L look at her life because you're a mom of young children, because Luce has a little cutie, like a little boy. What is he like, five or six years old? You hit it. Yeah, he's six. Six. He's and he then loves to read. <laughs> Of course they love to read. They better love to read. Yeah. <laughs> and he's always busy. <laughs> so, I mean, three kids, a teenager, a, a little boy, married, or already a business that she's all that she's also making sure that they give. And I saw, you know, the there was a there was a time about a week or so where you guys were giving away free pizzas to everybody. And I'm just like, goodness gracious, like heart so big, right? And also challenge abounds, challenges, challenges all day challenges, right? But there's a commitment to something bigger. And that is to make sure that little girls see themselves in your books. That is bigger than all of this. And also making sure that your kids know that their mother had a dream and didn't give up on it. And so when they get older and then they have some crazy harebrained idea to do something that they're going to say, wow, my mom did it. So, so can I, yeah, and I know that that fuels you, right? That does. I've seen, um, my daughters actually started writing and, and writing some really great stuff. I think one time I shared it with you, like, wow, like, she was really in a weird state, but damn, it was good. <laughs> like, yeah. like I shared it, but yeah, yeah, she's written some really deep stuff. And I had a, two of her teachers saying like, she's going to be an amazing writer and like recommended her for some scholarships that I was so proud of. And I was, they're like just waiting for her to be of age. Cause I think for those opportunities, you have to be at least 16, you have to be a junior, unfortunately. Okay. So I was like really excited about it. And uh, I told my daughters, like, listen, you could try out for anything. Try it out. I don't care if you don't, you don't like it. We're trying it out all. Mm -hmm. I made them all try out for figure skating, all try out for mm -hmm. acting. Um, they're doing coding now. This is our tryout year for coding since it's COVID. There's nothing else. Nice. And my husband's like, no, they're not trying out for co coding. They're going to learn coding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're learning coding. And I'm trying to figure out something else, like, really out there. I can't. My husband thinks I'm crazy. I want them to learn how to fly a plane. But oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I, my goal is, I don't want you to be pendeja. Like I want you to really say you tried everything and say I know what I like in life. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just had this thought. When's your birthday again? You're not a Gemini, are you? No, I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> oh, okay. I just had this thought, like you should be two people. <laughs> I don't think Tony's gonna like that. <laughs> no, I mean, like you literally, it's like, how do you do all this stuff? Like, it's literally two human beings, uh, like, pushing at the hilt of everything and doing it beautifully. What were you gonna say? Every now and then I cave in. I'm not gonna say, like, I do this, like, seamlessly, because every now and then I'm like, oh, you don't wanna read that? Okay, we'll read it. <laughs> but I do, I do have, like, this knowledge that. For example, like a, a lot of people don't know this, but in their arachnotic field, like there are not a lot of pilatonas that are women and that are Latina. No, not. I think the oh. percent is, is is very stark. I think it's less than. Uh, I forgot the report I read. I read a lot of reports. Well, I have to. I mean, I work in academic medical institutions, but sometimes it's very interesting when they talk about uh, people's professions. So mm -hmm. I think it's less than 10%, like 8%, something crazy. Whoa. It, it is so dismal. Uh -huh. but, uh, no, we need Latinas there. Mm -hmm. We need Latinas. So and you're going to make sure your kids can fly a plane. They can change their minds. They don't have to be pilots. Yeah. They're going to know how to fly a plane. Yeah, I mean, I'll be pushing them <laughs> out the plane and me staying in the plane. Like, that's my goal. <laughs> For them to at least feel like you know what my mom tried it all we have one life to live we need to if you're not scared and you're not trying then you're doing it wrong mm -hmm. life is not a safe thing like none of us are gonna make it out of here might as well have fun and try try it all uh -huh. and what a what a fun life you have and that you're <laughs> giving your kids and um for those of you watching the reason why i've 
I've interviewed so many different women is to show you there is no single archetype. Um, as much as I would like to say um, that there's a certain, uh, there's a certain like visible type of woman that does EDA, there really isn't. The one thing that you all have that everybody has is a belief that you can have something more. And also that that thing can help a lot of people. And that is like the X factor with uh, EDA because I've been in other coaching groups, other masterminds, and the businesses that are in them don't necessarily, they're not impact businesses. I would call EDA is for people and creatives um, who want to make an impact. And there's a lot more other people involved in what they're doing than like just themselves. You know, uh, and it's clear. It's very clear because I know every business has customers. This is different, though. Like you, you're when you talk about your books, you talk about so little girls can see themselves in my book. That's like a big, hairy aspiration. You know, that's like here's how I want to change the world um, by writing this book. So, um, so anyway, so you're really just a, uh, a yet another example of that. But we come in all shapes, sizes, ages um countries represented um and so one of the things i hear loose and i want you to talk about this are when you're like well i don't know if i want to join because you know how it is when latinas get together sometimes <laughs> like what do you have to say about that it ain't that group <laughs> <laughs> you coming in we're gonna ask you hey how, what's your name what you doing let's hang out like it's really gonna be that party like you want to be involved in like you really really gonna feel very welcomed and and i'm not saying that to say it i feel like this is like one of the only groups i've joined that i feel like hey it is a community and we don't take the word community lightly we want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to share their wins to share what's working what's not and we all step in like there's not one call when people have said like i'm struggling and everyone's like okay whatever figure it out no everyone jumps in <laughs> like send me the link let me know mm -hmm. i've i've had calls where people are like hey do you know what this means and i'm like yeah let me let's jump on let's figure it out together it's never it's never ever ever been like that sometimes i reach out and say hey did you see this and i'll and i'll we're all looking out for each other honestly mm -hmm. speaking and i think the beauty about eda that is so robust. Like there's no other mentorship program where you have a marketing clinic with a, like a marketing expert like Rosalia and mm -hmm. you don't have another group that has faculty calls, not just with you, Denise, mm -hmm. cause you're like, you know, like you're the madrina, but you bring on other people from other walks of life to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just like people that have been editors, uh, brought in, uh, you brought in people from podcasts. You brought in for you even brought the astrologist woman that I fell in love with, and I was just like, I was just thinking about it. Like I was telling my sister, it's like everyone, you know. You you brought uh, Maribel from the the Vayner Media too. Like that was just like talking about like you you touch on so many aspects of like Latinos needing to be seen and heard, and all these people that are really working towards that, you know. So it's really good to have an opportunity to be in a program like this because honestly you're gonna when you invest in yourself you're gonna grow more like and I'm sorry Google is not it like Google is not like, it's not gonna help sometimes and sometimes we have to dive deep and feel the feels and just go through it because I was researching a lot of things and I'm not gonna say I'm an expert at researching and I joined a couple of groups, but I needed to try things out in order to become better. To mm -hmm. say I'm a writer this year, to me, like that's the biggest win, the biggest win. Because at first, um, my imposter syndrome was just so big, mm -hmm. so big. <laughs> and so when I hear you say that, to say I'm a writer was the biggest thing, I'm hearing because I owned it. Is that true? Yes, I own it. And I'm like, and I'm like, uh, uh, I think Chloe, like, Yes, I'm a writer and I know you love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have like now my Chloe sass attitude. That's my uh, middle daughter that she's very like, she always says, don't ever see anyone 
uh, like, don't ever let anyone in if you're breaking down inside. She's uh -huh. such a strong person. I love it. <laughs> oh, she's so sweet. Uh, we were actually thinking about Chloe as the name, as and one of the names for our kids too. I think I told you that. I love that. Name. Yeah. So, um, so, all right now, so you guys, I mean, you're get hopefully by now we've been doing this yeah. all week and there's a replay. There's, uh, every, you know, you're going to get a chance to watch all these interviews. And my greatest hope is that you see these women, you see their work and you not only feel inspired that something more is possible for you, but if you feel that stirring inside, if you feel like maybe I could just do that. Maybe I could really pull this off in 2021. I really want to sincerely invite you to do that. Now, Moose, we've talked about your books. Uh, add length them here. Uh, where can people buy your books? Sure. So they're welcome to uh, find me on my website, which is my name, loosemac.com, or you can find me on Amazon. And I really hope by next year you'll be reading some more amazing works that I'm that are coming ahead <laughs> with Dominican writers that I'm really proud of and happy. I really love that community. And also another piece that I've written and I can't wait for it to come out as well. Awesome. And we will be plastering that all over this group. <laughs> uh, so don't worry, it's coming. And we're just so proud of you. Um, also, if you have a young woman in your life, whatever shade she may be, she will benefit from reading this book. And it's such a beautiful thing. When you buy one of Luce's books, you are not only supporting a small business, you are su uh, supporting a woman of color, you are supporting the idea that diverse voices and diverse stories should be told okay so it's not too late to order for christmas and even if you if you wrap a, a printout of the cover of her book um it is such a valuable gift to give the gift of um of diverse stories and supporting someone who's out there fighting a good fight really for the benefit of everybody uh of, for all of us so thanks for the work that you do thanks for never giving up and always <laughs> being a reliable source of inspiration for all of us in the end your dream accelerator loose we just adore you oh, so a nice. lot of hearts a lot of hearts um and if you ever don't we will all remind you oh so, oh my God, I love so, much. so much love kid so we also have a hashtag in eda it's called love fest because sometimes we just start gushing and we can't help ourselves and we can't stop and there was a, a recent post that happened i was talking about it with nicole and because she had she had played a very pivotal role in that and i it's like i read the post and um and, and tears were coming down my face and i just was like I think the fastest response that I possibly could, including I'm crying as I'm writing this, or you made this made me cry or whatever. And then I posted it and there was like four posts there. I think all of us were reading it at the same time. Everybody said how much they were crying and, and tears of joy, because when something good happens to one of us, it's like it had something good happened to our family. That's you know? so true. And we all share it so frequently. Like, and if something's bad happening to one of us, we remind you, uh, no, this happened, but all these great stuff happened. So right. we need that kind of community. Yes. It's like we just swarm in and uh, it's just such a beautiful thing. So I invite, this is your official invitation for those of you who are watching live or watching the recording. I invite you to join us in the End Your Dream Accelerator it is, it has been said that I'm not charging enough money. Um, I will tell you, I'm keeping the price at where it is at for a little bit now because I want it to be affordable uh, to everybody. And I am going to even tell you if that price is a challenge in any way and you want to do it, reach out to me. Let's talk because I don't want you to not have this opportunity for yourself. And if you are okay with the price and investing that amount of money in yourself, you have 30 days to decide if this is something that is a fit for you. So my invitation is jump in, check it out. There's all the calls that Luz talked about are all in a library of calls that you can listen to at any time and you have complete access to them. You also have access to my five foundations, which is my very best thinking on why Project Enya took off the way that it took off and continues to take off and why I continue to be invited to speak, um, why we were recognized by Apple Podcasts as one of the top six Latina 
Latino podcasters in over Hispanic heritage, why we continue to um, get the visibility and opportunities that we get. All of that, all of that, how the heck did this happen? Is in five, uh, five foundation, uh, in a bundle. And um, another thing I'll tell you is um, I do not gatekeep um, my information. I am not uh, that person that will say, oh, here's the recipe and leave out the cinnamon. I am not that person. If anything, I probably overshare. <laughs> and sometimes I wonder, I hope that that has never used against me, right? <laughs> I literally just uh, trust that the, that the souls and the hearts of the women that are there, I just trust all of you when I tell you this is something I've never shared before publicly. And that the reason why I do it is because I know that that level of candor and authenticity makes a difference. And that when we are aspiring to do great things with our life, we deserve all the story, all the information. Yeah nothing and an opportunity to ask somebody what it's really like so with that said Luce, i want to thank you so much for taking your time today obviously you're a busy woman uh <laughs> taking your time today uh to join me and um and have a beautiful day and i know i will see you on the next eda call next week yeah thank you so much denise i really enjoyed being with you awesome take care all right bye